I came to Fairmont Heights in 1950, and that was the first year that Fairmont Heights opened as a junior senior high school. Uh, the building was not complete. We did not have a cafeteria or a gymnasium. Uh, the physical education teachers taught phys ed on the corridors. For lunch, the ladies prepared sandwiches and milk and sent them to the various classrooms. I was a business teacher. I was the only business education teacher there at that time. We had an enrollment of a class of typing. We had uh, bookkeeping, office machines, and shorthand. I taught all of the subjects. The department grew. And the following year, we added another teacher. There were only two black high schools in Prince George's County. Fairmont Heights was in the northern area and Douglas High School was in the southern area. Those were the only two high schools. So you went to one or the other and a number of students rode right past other schools to get to Fairmont Heights. We had them from as far north as the Laurel area and College Park and Brentwood, all around Fairmont Heights. And we had uh, the new community of Carsondale, all in that area. Those students were at Douglas High, which was Southern County. Douglas was located in Upper Marlboro. Students at that particular time, had a lot, we had a lot of support from parents. Parents were interested in having their children do well. Uh, my particular department, because of our location so close to the federal government, was very successful. We trained students to get jobs, and a number of them did get jobs in the federal government. We were so successful that we were able to get the examiners from the Civil Service Commission come to school once a year and uh, give the exams to the students so that they could get jobs in the federal government. Our goal was to, our belief was that every child could be taught. It was our responsibility. Mr. Golson carried that basically as his challenge to us. We would never go in and say we cannot teach this person. He did not believe that. He believed that if the child came to school, if the warm body was there, that it was your responsibility to do something with that child. My responsibilities as a vice principal were most unusual. I took care of all of the financial aspects of the school. Uh, I worked with, I had some responsibilities to work with girls, but I took care of the book, the bookkeeping for their entire school. That was basically my responsibility as a vice principal. And I might add that I was one of the first female vice principals in a high school in the county. Mr. Golson dared do it, and the other principals began to follow his lead. Fairmont Heights High School as a substitute in 1957. My husband was a military chaplain and we came into the area and uh, I had been teaching at the post where we had lived. So I saw the school up on the hill and went in and said, do you need substitutes? And uh, he took my name and told me how to carry my credentials to Upper Marlboro and he'd be very happy to have me. And so I did the substituting from February of 1957 until school closed that June. During the summer, I got a call one morning and Mr. Goldson, who was the principal, said, are you interested in a permanent teaching position? If you are, come on up and we'll process the application. Uh, it was an awkward situation. I'm a black woman and I, my hair was wet. I was in the process of washing my hair. <laughs> but I said, yes, I wanted the job. And so I stuck the hair, 
up under a wide brim hat, put on my best cotton dress and went up there and signed the application. That was the beginning of my sojourn at Fairmont Heights and it was quite a journey. It was an eye opener. The very first meeting was an orientation and uh, Mr. Goldson had all of his faculty members there telling them what was available not only uh, in Fairmont Heights but in the county. He wanted to orient us about the needs of the students we had. He wanted to tell us what kinds of students we had and his expectations of what we would do to help to enhance their education. We as a staff, staff were expected to impress the students with the importance of um, living in the community and being a part of community and not disruptive. There were students who, of course, were disruptive and they were dealt with in individually. And when I said dealt with, it was not a matter of punishment. It was a matter of helping them to understand how their acts affected them in the community. There were other students who had exceptional abilities and they were directed to people who could help them to enhance those abilities. People produce best when they're doing what they like doing. So I impressed upon the youngsters, I tried to impress upon them as they have set their goals uh, in life for working, that they put themselves in an area that used the skills that they liked. The other thing was, mathematics even today is looked at as something that's exceptional and very difficult. Uh, it was my job to show them that it was logical, that it was utilitarian, and that it was manageable. And so I wanted them to love mathematics as much as I loved it. Mr. Goldsman was a unique leader. I had the unique experience of having worked under many principals, North of Virginia, in Essex County, Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, and military posts. But he was a take charge administrator. And uh, not in the sense that I, he wanted to indicate that he was the boss, but in the sense that he knew exactly what he was doing. He knew what was to be expected of those who were working with him. He was open to a certain extent, to suggestions, but he certainly was open to ideas because he was an idea man. Mr. Golson was a very energetic uh, gentleman. The best way I can describe him, he was a teacher at heart. He taught his teachers. Mr. Golson <laughs> felt that in-service training, there was nothing that took the place of in-service training. And he did something in Fairmont Heights that was not done in Prince George's County. It was not required by the contract, but it was required by Mr. Golson. And if you remained on the staff, you, take that, you did that in-service training. And that meant that every Monday at the cl close of school, he would have an in-service training session with the teachers. And it was generated by two things. Every year there was a theme and this theme was to enhance the learning of the kids throughout the school, and it was the underpinning of whatever we did. The second thing was, there were things that were going on in the school, and in order to make a school a unit, he had to work with us as a group. And so Monday evenings, we knew that maybe from three until five o'clock, the teachers would be there squirming in a planning session. I know now that that was a part of what kept the school not only together, but caused the school to excel as an educational institution. His planning also went to the kinds of teachers that he had there. He was able to select his teachers, which was not true throughout the county, but you must remember that this was a school for all African-American youngsters and so I believe that in educational administration in Upper Marlboro, 
as long as we met the criteria for the state on paper, we could do whatever we wanted to do. And Mr. Golson wanted to excel. Therefore, he selected teachers he thought would produce in terms of reaching the youngsters. And he held their attention and people wanted to be there. Well, you know, my ties to, to Fairmont Heights are, are a little different than the average person because I have two ties to Fairmont Heights. My father opened the school in 1950 with G. James Golson. He was the art teacher there for probably something like 20-something years. And then I got to come in 1970 to uh, be there myself and graduated in 74. So the experience was just a tremendous experience because not only the legacy that was there, but also the experience I had while I was there and the friends I made and the friends that I continue to have to this day. What I think I, my experience and Ed Gaskin's experience that he just spoke about is, is really a lot alike. Uh, my first contact with Fremont Heights had to deal with, I guess, my visits there as a youngster in Beaver Heights Elementary School. Uh, my grandfather was the very first head custodian at Fairmont Heights. All of my, like my dad was in the first graduating class at Fairmont Heights. So my going there during the daytime when I would get out, I would go see my grandfather who was right up the hall from Miss Dale and she would always, she was home ec, she always had little goodies for myself and my friends when we came by there. So it was always a, a fun experience but at the same time uh, I was in contact with a lot of the teachers like Mr. Gaskins, like Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Forrest who had a daughter that was also in my class. What I learned at Fairmont Heights was a sense of community, a sense of tradition and history, teachers who cared about you. Uh, I was not a, one of the best students. I probably tried to spend my life in the bathroom. And were it not for Donald Kaya, uh, I probably would have because he would knock on the bathroom door and tell me and my cut buddies, uh, come on out, I know you in there and we would come on out the bathroom and he would literally escort us to class. I had teachers like Caradella Thomas Booker. I remember walking in her class one day with a big attitude and I kind of flammed my book on the table and she took my books and flammed them back and said, now can you do me one better? And then after I realized, okay, well, I gotta be cool in her class, then I went on to learn uh, Spanish, was a straight A student in her class. The first time I heard about South Africa and the word apartheid was in Ms. Ginyard's class. And and the first black studies course I took was from Myrtle Fentress. My family that graduated uh, years before me, I have an older brother that came out in 1960 and sisters and brothers that followed him almost uh, every two years thereafter. So I, like one of the other gentlemen that was talking about uh, the fact that he entered Fairmont before he really entered Fairmont. I had the same experiences through my older brothers and sisters. Uh, I remember Mr. Golson, he was there when I got there, uh, Dr. Kaya, um, Mr. Fortune, was that his name? Fortune. Fortune, yeah. Uh, and I tell people sometimes, you know, I had the great experience of um, having old school teachers, teachers who lived in our community. You know, we were all a part of them. We didn't realize really necessarily that we were minorities or um, working class or anything like that you know I live we live next door to teachers and doctors and you know Fairmont Heights was just such a great institution for me and my family you know we all came out of there we all went on to do wonderful things and um, I just you know I can't say too much about it you know it was just a great school for us. When I think about Fairmont Heights High School um, a lot of very positive emotions well up in me um, for several reasons. First, um, our parents died, the McCullough's died. Um, both of my parents were dead by the time I was in the ninth grade. Um, so of course that was a lot for young kids and I had younger brothers and a sister who also graduated from Fairmont Heights High School. Um, but what I found was that when the teachers there, particularly Mr. John Williams, found out about our situation, they just accepted us as part of their family. Um, 
and it was not just Mr. Williams. So many teachers had such a very strong, positive effect on us. It was like a, just a huge family, um, a huge family that expected you to excel. Thamma Heights High School was our family school. My grandfather was one of the original builders of Thamma Heights High School. He helped to build the school. My aunt, both of my aunts and my uncles graduated from Thamma Heights High School. Two of my cousins graduated from Thamma Heights High School. Uh, my older cousins and then my two cousins that we're all in 1955, we all graduated from Fama Heights High School. Um, Miss Chris lived in the neighborhood with my aunt. Uh, Miss um, Ginyard uh, lived around a corner from us. Uh, the teachers knew my grandparents by name so if I wasn't at school the office didn't call the teacher called or they would go up to Jumbo where my grandfather would be hacking sometimes after he finished working and they would say Mr. Wilson your granddaughter didn't come to school where is she the other thing that really stands out in my mind about Fairmont Heights uh, too is the sports and the athletics I mean Mr. Kenny Freeman is a is a legend uh, and that basketball team in particular, as I've heard all the other students say, uh, it, it, it was surreal because it was, you knew that you had the best basketball team in the state of Maryland. Uh, and we would be at University of Maryland at Coldfield House every year. I was very fortunate. I <coughs> did finish uh, uh, my uh, BA and, and finally it took me, what, six, seven years to do it, but I was fortunate to uh, finish at Howard University and I went back to uh, get my master's and, uh, in, in, in education from Bowie State. And I'm going to tell you something, it had it not been for uh, Star Wars such as G. James Golson, and you mentioned Dr. Kaya, my counselor was Ms. Pruden, um, and I'd be so honored to meet her and to let her know I'm so sorry. But it had not been for these uh, pioneers, uh, I would not, thank you so much, I would not have been able to, as a first generation in my family, to attend college, to graduate from college, uh, it would not have happened.